Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. I'm here with Keith Moore once again. We have a great, great object in a box here that I'm incredibly excited about. And apparently this object has been on loan since 1932 and it's only just come back to the society. That's correct, yeah. That's yeah. an amazingly long loan. It is, yeah, and it's an amazingly old box by the look of it too, so quite interesting. You'd probably better open it, Brady, to let people have a look. Let's do it. Here we go, no one does unboxings like the Royal Society. Oh yeah. Look at that. That is a shiny piece of metal and some extra little do wackies. Yep, so the do wackies are lenses, but the really key bit is this specular mirror here, which is one of the earliest around, and it relates to a new type of telescope produced for the Royal Society and shown at the Royal Society by John Hadley. John Hadley made this mirror from a metal called speculum, and it was a real pioneering telescope, wasn't it? That's right. Now, before we have a closer look at some of these objects, let's show you what the telescope itself look like because mm. Keith's got some great documents here for us. This is the account of the telescope that Hadley presented to the Royal Society and conveniently as you can see it has a drawing of the instrument on the back of this. This is the engraved version of it. Okay. So you can see what the whole thing would have looked like. So as I understand it Keith I mean refracting telescopes where the light refracts through glass had been around for a while. Indeed. Yeah. Newton and a couple of others sort of came up with the idea of the reflecting using the mirrors. That's right, yeah. But this is the first time that it really became like big time. This was real proof of concept to the next level. And there's our mirror at the back. That's right. So you can see there's a little panel here that just pops up and you can insert the specular mirror in the, the back of the instrument. The whole telescope is quite compact, not like the really big lens-based instruments of the period. The eyepiece goes on the side at the top, as is so often the way with reflecting telescopes. Mm -hmm. These are the eyepieces here, are they, Keith? That's right. Let's just take a couple of these out and we can maybe have a look. So there's no glass in that one. This one. Ah, yeah. Yeah, can you see that? I'm not seeing through it, obviously. Can you see the glass in there, James? I'll turn it around the other way. It looks better that way. This is history in our hands. Some of the eyes that may have rested against this eyepiece. Mm because I know for a fact a lot of the luminaries of the Royal Society at the time were using this telescope. Halley, I know, looked through it and made yep. observations with it. Yep. Do you think Newton might have? If Halley did, you think Newton might have? Well, Newton was alive at this period, so this is the 1720s. Uh, Newton is still alive until 1727, so he would certainly have known about this because this was read up the Royal Society as an improvement on his instrument. Can so we look at the mirror? Indeed we can, yes. Now it might be just worth having a, a quick read of what Hadley says about it. The instrument consists of a metalline speculum about six inches in diameter. The back has a hollow screw made at its centre to receive the end of a handle, which is screwed on whenever the metal is to be moved in order to avoid sullying its polished surface by handling. So. Here's the handle. Here's the handle, yeah. yeah. This is the ready-made method for taking the specular mirror in and out of the telescope when it's being used. Look, it's got a crack in the handle there. This is like a Harry Potter wand with a crack in it, like, you know, because <laughs> it's been used by the wrong wizard. Well, it's what, just... what does that say about me? Yeah, no, that says you've, you've read too much children's fiction, I think. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. This is actually quite heavy, mm -hmm. as you'd expect. Ah. And uh, lo and behold, on the back. So we're not going to do it, but presumably yeah. that's for screwing it just there. pops in there, and that's how you would handle it. And just pop it into the back of your telescope. Can I have a hold? Yeah, just a lovely thing. Oh yeah, it's really weighty. This is the mirror that was used for some of these real pioneering observations. The reflections in this mirror gave us a whole new look at things like Jupiter, Saturn. Here comes my reflection. It's not a good look, is it? No. Do you want to see yourself, James? <laughs> a little bit misty. I'll let you pop it back no, in, Keith. Okay. <laughs> we'll take a look at the account of some of the fellows having a look through this. So this is from the uh, minutes of the Royal Society. And this is March the 2nd, 1720 to 21. And you can see it happens using the great telescope at one stage. So this is a big aerial telescope. They're comparing uh, this reflecting telescope with uh, the, the conventional instrument. So Mr. Hadley was pleased to give the society a relation of some of the most remarkable observations which he had made with his reflecting telescope. In observing Jupiter's satellites, he has seen distinctly the shadows of the first and third satellites 
cast upon the body of the planet. Mr. Folks, that's Martin Folks, who's later president of the Royal Society, and Dr. Duran, James Duran, he's secretary of the Royal Society, affirmed that Mr. Hadley had likewise shown them the shadow of the third satellite through the same telescope. So, you know, these other fellows have had a look and, and they can confirm that Hadley has indeed done these things. So in observing Saturn the last spring, at a time when that planet was about 15 days past the opposition, he saw the shade of the planet cast upon the ring and plainly discerned the ring to be distinguished into two parts by a dark line concentric to the circumference of the ring. I mean, there are many gaps in Saturn's rings, but now we're starting to see them for the first time. How good's that? The actual telescope itself, that was made of wood, so we don't have that anymore. That's right. I mean, a lot of the materials in the Royal Society's museum repository just rotted away over time. They were misused, mishandled. Things wear down, but the business end of this one, the speculum mirror, which is pretty durable, of course, has survived, and here it is. And, you know, quite a key piece of astronomical technology, so a really great and important thing to have. Brilliant. Look at this, this is like the ultimate selfie. Here we have the world's first reflecting telescope, the first surviving one, I should say. And here, the bit that's the most important, this is the, the speculum, the mirror, which sits at the back of the instrument there, and that's what uh, gathers and concentrates the light. James, do you get this? Newton's original mirror in my hand 